This is Mark chapter 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Hmm, the wayside, remember that. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. Those are the shallow. Verse 6. And when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred fold. And he said unto them, He that hath ears, let him hear. Now, what I want to say, I want to go back over this real quick. Because I want you to kind of see what he's painting a picture of. Someone went out to sow. Those are the words of God sown in our hearts. Our hearts are the, are the ground. And our hearts determine whether we are uh, shallow or stony or full of thorns or whatever we are. Are we good ground? And the reason I say that is because you'd be surprised how stubborn people can be. Even God himself called some of the Israelites stiff-necked, a stiff-necked generation. When you are stiff-necked, you can have a form of religion. You can go to church every week, do all the, the good deeds that you think should be done. But it doesn't, it doesn't reduce the sins that you allow in your life. So let's go over our hearts with a fine tooth comb, shall we? All right, listen to this. Now, we're going to discuss the verses. A sower went out to sow. And some things fell by the wayside, where the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Do you know, <laughs> there are many people that come to the Lord, they, e they eagerly come. And they think that the beginning, the middle, and the end stops right there. So these are all the people that have come to hear the Lord, to hear his word, and receive him. But this is what happens with some. Some, they're so hardened in their hearts that the seed does not penetrate the soil. Think about that. And because it doesn't penetrate the soil, before you know it, as soon as they have come, they're gone. Here today, gone tomorrow. No staying power whatsoever. Slightest little pimple in life, and they're off to the races. They totally forgot everything they've heard from God's word. The stony ground, when it talks about it had no depth of earth, the stony ground is those, those people that came, they believed, they received, but because they're shallow by nature. There are some people that are shallow. And when they're shallow, they don't love deeply. They don't feel deeply. They don't, they, they don't deal with life from a depth. They deal with life from a shallow area. They, they talk about the games. They talk about the weather. They talk about politics. They talk about what somebody wore at church. They talk about how funny somebody walked. They, they, these are people, they don't really dig deep into anything. Their whole life is shallow. 
They're all about what their body wants, what their eyes see. They live by their senses. They are totally engrossed in their flesh. Their every, every action, every motivation is dictated by their flesh. And they don't realize that there is no depth in them. And when there is no depth, there's another one that comes and goes. They might last a little longer, but they come and they go. And it's their choice. Because there are things, see, there are people who have staying power. They can stay, as they say, that uh, a, a friend can stick closer than a brother. And a real solid friend is with you through the arguments, through the misunderstandings. They're with you through thick and thin, no matter what. Well, some of us only want to stick with God as long as he has blessings and good things for us. But as soon as life gets a little hard, as soon as somebody hurts our little feelings, as soon as something doesn't go our way, we're off to the races. I'm out of here. I ain't got time for this. You don't want that kind of person as a friend. You don't. And sometimes those are the kind of friends that are the quickest to manipulate. You have to be very careful with who you are and who you allow to be in your sphere of influence. The, the, there's an old expression. It's not from the Bible. It's an old street adage, but it's very true. Association brings on assimilation. And whoever you allow yourself to hang with, whoever you allow yourself to spend a lot of time with, you start picking up their ways, their attitudes, their feelings, their sentiments. And if they have a whole bunch of issues with Christianity, with God, with the Bible, with whatever, you'll find yourself questioning too. If they have issues with godly people, you find yourself having issues with those godly people too. There are some people that can know a person for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. And one little somebody comes along, some little shallow somebody that's all caught up in peripheral stuff. They, they don't have any depth. But they want to hang with you. And while they're hanging with you, they're filling your ear with poison. And before you know it, you start doubting and disliking the very people that have been with you through thick and thin because they planted seeds of doubt. And sometimes seeds of doubt can hold a lot stronger than the seeds of God's word. Why? Because your ear is more bent to the person than your ear is bent to God's word. So that's what you have to ask God. Where are you in the equation? Life can come with the, in these same situations where you have no root. And when the heat of the day hits and you're suffering from, from trials, from ch uh, challenges, from mishaps in life, and they hit you on your blind side, you don't like it. First thing you do is blame God. And you walk away from him very easily because you never knew him. You were on the shallow ground of walking with the Lord. You never dug deep. You just hung around the fringes. And then as soon as something trips you up, you're down another road. Because you don't have that staying power. You got to ask God for that staying power. And it's only the Holy Ghost that will give it to you. And if, you don't, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have the power to stay anywhere. You'll flit around like a fly, jumping from one pile of garbage from one surface to the next. You don't stay anywhere. You're a rolling stone through your life. Even in relationships. You jump in and out of relationships like a hops, like a, 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 what do you call those, the pogo stick. You just doing, 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 doing. You're with this guy, you're with that guy, you're with that girl, you're with that girl. Doing, doing, doing. You're back and forth, in and out. Why? You don't have staying power. And the ones you end up staying with are usually the ones you should not. And some fell among thorns. 
and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. <sighs> when life hits you, when you are hit with challenges, when you are laid off from your job, when your your uh, um, significant other breaks up with you, when your child goes south, when your parents disagree with you, when your friends at school do something that, that makes you upset, when the people at your job uh, don't seem to to worship you the way you need to be worshipped, appreciated, valued, whatever word you want to put on it. Somebody in your family dies. You are so angry at God. You don't want to talk about church. You don't want to read the word. You don't want to look at the Bible. Throw that thing in the trash. You do not have time. Because life sucks, and what's the point? No. The harder you, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you a little hint. The harder you lean on God, the easier your life will be on you. No matter what happens, God can take away, if you ask. He can take away the hurt. He can take away the sting of death. He can take away the feeling of humiliation. He can take away your shame. He can take away your bitterness. He can take away your anger. He can erase every bit of it. But you have not because you ask not. And then you allow yourself to be choked. It's like life the enemy is choking the life out of you. And you're allowing it because you have a what's the use, what's the point attitude. All right. So now we move on to good ground. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. See, when you're on good ground, you're growing. You're growing. You're getting holier and holier, more and more righteous. You're not holy and in sinful and holy and sinful and holy and sinful. What the Bible refers to that is as a person who is double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable is another word for fickle. See, when, when Jesus died on that cross, he handled all these, all these issues that we live through, all these problems that we struggle with. But the problem with us is he's there. The door, the window is open, but we have to step through that door. And who is the door? Jesus Christ. In order to get everything we need by his Holy Spirit, to handle everything that's thrown at us without getting bitter, without staying angry. Yeah, we can get angry for a minute, but we sin not. We don't live there. Without turning back to our sins when we need a pacifier and we need something to stroke our emotions. We need to feel pretty. We need to feel sexy. We need to feel handsome. We need to feel buff. We need to feel macho, whatever your need is. Only God can validate you through his son, Jesus Christ. That's where you get your validation, not by some sexy, significant other or insignificant other for that matter. You have to remember, number one, no human being. And I, and I say this to you, married couple, to you couples, period. The mistake we make is we look to that other to fill all the voids, the gaps, the holes in our souls. That is not for them to do. They've got holes in their own soul. And the only one, the only power that can fill that is the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ. When the Bible said, by his stripes, we are healed, that covers 
everything. That covers the shoulder that's got calcium buildup in it. That covers congestive heart failure that makes the body accumulate fluid. That covers kidney failure. It heals. It reverses the damage and heals. That covers psychological damage from being abused by your parents. That covers being beaten physically by your parents, being molested and raped by relatives, by family members, by adults, by other kids. I am telling you everything that Christ died for. Is a total, it blankets and covers everything, every challenge we could have in life. Losing a limb, losing a loved one, losing a job, losing our dignity. Everything that could possibly happen, losing that child. You have no idea how much easier when Jesus said, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. When you pick up your cross and follow Christ, yes, there are going to be challenges with that in and of itself. But all the challenges, all the frustrations, all the struggles, everything you go through in this life was nailed to the cross, baby. And the only way for you not to live the abundant life, for you not to be healed, is if you're not pursuing it, if you're not asking, if you're not seeking, if you're not knocking. You, you don't just knock once. That's not all you do when you go to someone's house. You knock more than once. You always do. Because you want to make sure they heard you, and they come to the door and open it. So why is it when we go to God, we think, we think one knock should do it? That should be done. No. Even Jesus said, if you persistently ask, the, the, the interpretation is when you ask and keep on asking, when you knock, you keep on knocking, when you seek, you keep on seeking. And it shall be given unto you. See, we don't understand that the way that God wants this thing to go down, let's put it this way. Let's bring it down to our level, shall we? I got me a little boyfriend. And he is fine, so fine. Do -do -do -do. Do so fine, do 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 do. My baby, so doggone fine. And you, every time you turn around, you're on the cell phone. Hi, baby. How you doing, baby? What you doing? When you coming over? Ring, ring. Hi. What you doing? What, are we gonna hook up? Okay. And everything is about him, 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 or. In, in a few men, it's her, her, her. You're on the phone. You're in each other's face. You're, you're, you're kissing and smooching. You're going out to dinner. Every time, every chance you can get, you're around each other. Why is it you cannot pursue God that way? He's not there. He's invisible. I can't enjoy him like I can enjoy it. So far. No, guess what? Yes, you can. When you experience God, he brings you more joy than any human being can. And when you do enjoy the human being, it's at a much better, much healthier level. Why? Because your foundation is built on God, on his love, on his faithfulness, on his power. Relationship with God trumps everything that could happen to you in your life. Everything. That's why he says, acknowledge me. That's not just saying, just ask me. Acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will direct your path. How many choices, how many moves do you make without even asking, without even discussing it with him? Mm -hmm. See, that's relationship. And the more you seek him, the more you, you relate to him, the more you 
you lay your life before him to direct your path with, the more you, the sooner you experience him, the deeper it goes. You get deeper and deeper and deeper like the palm tree that grows deep before it grow before it breaks ground. Why does it grow deep? Because it's so tall when it gets to full height, it needs a very, very deep root in order to hold it when the winds come, when the tornadoes blow. It needs to be able to bend and not break. That's the power that God gives us. You will bend, baby, but you will not break. Cast down, but not destroy. Oh, you have to understand the power you have when you walk with God. Mm. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the storm. Mm. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver. Oh, I can't even think of the words, but it's just beautiful. Walk on, walk on, and don't be afraid. God is with you. You'll never walk alone unless you choose to and the way you choose to is by grieving his spirit handling everything at your level your way and then you wonder why things go south why that failed why that fell apart why did that fall to the ground because you're not acknowledging him in all your ways no you acknowledge him about going to church and what scripture to read, if you even ever read scripture. But when it comes to your love life or it comes to making that money, honey, all of a sudden, you ain't got time to acknowledge God. You got to handle this now. And you got the brains. You know, a little macaroni between your two ears. Yeah, you're going to make up your own mind. You're going to handle your own business. Well, guess what? He will let you. Hands off, baby. That's where that reprobate starts coming into play. You do not want to get to the point where your conscience is so seared that you don't feel anything when the Lord's trying to tap you and get your attention. You're so numb, you don't even get it. You're so blinded by your own desires, you don't even get when God's trying to warn you about something. And God's trying to tell you, leave that one alone. They are highly manipulative. They're dangerous. They will make you walk away from me. They will make you drop your values and pick up theirs. And next thing you know, you will be turned over to a reprobate mind like them. But they know how to talk the God talk. They know how to flatter. They know how to compliment. They have the charm. And they charm you like that snake. And they charm you right out of God's hands. And you don't see it because you're not acknowledging. You're not. You're going by what they say, what they want. You're yanked around like a little puppet on a string. If they call, you come running. The conversation gets cut short with your mama, your papa, with anybody because they called you. You got to get off the phone. Come on now. Which one is your God? Or, hmm, hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Be careful. You want God to say you are good ground from day one to the last day of your life. So that he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Some of you are so controlled by your own fears. As soon as something pops up, you're about to hit the panic button. Got to be careful with that, y'all. All right. Let me say this. Fear is not of God. You hear me? Fear has torment. God is love. And perfect love cast out all fear. So you start feeling that fear, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you're feeling, tempted, drawn, driven in the wrong direction, manipulated by someone else's control, no, you rebuke that crap and get out of it. Whatever you got to do to stay close to God, 
Whatever you sacrifice, it should never be your relationship with God so you can have this one, that one, or the other one. No. Your sacrifice should be all of the all of everything that's down here for the sake of Christ. Because he sacrificed it all for you and me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The stony ground, I believe, is the sin. The shallow ground is the lukewarm. The deep ground are the chosen. And the non-penetrating soil are the lost.